Annie, welcome or welcome back to my channel. So in the last two months on YouTube, my channel has gone up by over 15,000 subscribers and growing literally by the minute. However, I most definitely did not start here. In fact, in my first year on YouTube, I got my first 1,000 subscribers from people I know following my channel. And then after that, it took me over a year and a half to get my next 1,000 subscribers. So in about September 2019, when my channel actually started to grow, I started to realize how many mistakes I'd made and things I'd done wrong and things I was doing to my channel that was basically slowing down my growth and keeping me from growing. And from having conversations with other YouTubers, small YouTubers, YouTubers of all different sizes, I can tell I'm definitely not alone in having made these mistakes as many of us have made these same mistakes. So in today's video, I wanted to sit down and share with you guys these mistakes that I and other YouTubers have made so that you learn from my mistakes and don't make the same ones and you can grow that much faster on your own channel journey. Now, this video may be a little bit longer than my other ones because I really wanted to include absolutely everything I could possibly think of in this video. And these are in no specific order, just basically wrote them down as I thought of them. So don't pay too much attention to the order in which I share these. And last but not least, before starting on to today's video, here are this video's shout outs. If you guys want one just like these beautiful people, all you have to do is follow me on my Instagram and stay active on there. I run a randomizer every time I upload a new video and pick four people at random from the comments of my latest post. So if you want to be the next shout out, be sure to follow me on Instagram and stay active over there. And now I think that is now just enough rambling, so let's get on started with today's video. So the first mistake I definitely made that a lot of YouTubers make is not verifying your channel. So if you go to youtube.com slash verify, you can see whether or not your channel is verified. And all you have to do to verify your channel is you put in either your phone number or your email address, they will send you a code for you to put in. And once you input the code, that is how you verify your channel. And why you should want to verify is because once you do, you're allowed a few different features, like you can upload videos longer than 15 minutes, you can live stream, upload custom thumbnails. So it is something that takes literally two seconds that is very, very important to your channel growth that I think everybody should take the two seconds to do. Which brings me to mistake number two, which is not uploading custom thumbnails. So if you are not aware, thumbnails on YouTube is the picture that people see when they see your video, wherever they see it on YouTube, the thumbnail is the picture on your video. So when you upload your video to YouTube, there is a section for you to upload your custom thumbnail or your thumbnail. And basically what happens is if you do not upload your own custom thumbnail, then YouTube picks a random screenshot from within your video to make your thumbnail. So whenever somebody sees your thumbnail, it has a very unprofessional, unedited, random screenshot for a thumbnail, which is not very attractive to make somebody want to click onto your video. So do yourself one favor that I and many other YouTubers did not do and watch a bunch of tutorials on YouTube on how to make thumbnails, how to edit thumbnails, how to have eye-catching thumbnails because it is one lesson that I took way too long to learn. Mistake number three, niching down too far or not niching at all. If you know me well enough, you know this is a word I don't like because in a lot of ways, I think it can be taken too far. If you don't know what a niche is, basically it is the theme of your channel. So a lifestyle niche, a DIY niche, a vlogger niche or travel. Most beginner YouTubers either make the mistake of not having a niche at all or niching down too far. So why are either of these a mistake? Not niching down at all. You have no theme or cohesiveness to your channel. Therefore, whenever somebody goes onto your channel, they have no way of knowing what your channel is about and what they are subscribing to. So by having a niche or having it written on your channel banner, you make it much easier for potential subscribers to see what your channel is about and decide much easier whether or not they want to subscribe to you. Now, some other people also niche down too far, where they put themselves in such a specific niche and attract an audience for that one specific niche that they eventually find themselves unable to branch out, try other things, do other types of videos because they niche down too far. So my advice to you is pick a niche like lifestyle or motherhood or something of the sort, but don't niche down too, too far to the point that you can't do anything else because then you find yourself stuck and feel like you can't do anything else but that one specific thing. So that is probably one of the number one mistakes I made with my own channel and don't want to see you guys make the same mistake. Mistake number four, not knowing your audience. Once you know what type of content you're making on your channel, then it's much easier to narrow down which specific type of audience you want to attract. 
So who are your videos for? Are you targeting college students? Are you targeting first time moms? Are you targeting sports lovers? Once you have a clear idea of who your videos are for, it's then much easier to target specific subscribers who are within that type of audience to get them to subscribe to your channel. And if you go into the analytics of your YouTube Creator Studio, you can see your audience demographics and see what type of audience you are attracting, which will then help you to see whether or not you are attracting your target audience and who you ideally want to be watching your videos. Mistake number five not giving your videos a goal or a meaning. Why are you making this video? Who is it supposed to help? What is it supposed to achieve? Now, obviously some videos on YouTube like vlogs are not really meant to grow your channel or get views or anything of the sort. In those cases, this doesn't really matter too, too much. But if you are looking to actually gain active viewers and subscribers, it is very important for you to know what purpose your video has, because if you don't know, there's for sure no chance your subscribers will know what the purpose is. So when creating videos on your channel, you wanna ask yourself, what is the point of this video? What is this going to achieve? Are my viewers going to know what this is for and what they're gonna get out of this video? Because for the longest time when starting my own channel, I made loads of videos I thought were full of meaning for myself, but had absolutely no value to anybody else. And that is a very, very big mistake. Mistake number six, sub for sub, let's support each other or any other type of engagement swap. When you're first starting your channel, it is very easy to get lost in the vanity of numbers. You start at zero, so ideally you want to get as many subscribers as possible to get as far away from zero as possible. And sometimes when you are a new YouTuber, you want that number to go up so badly that you'll literally resort to any way possible of gaining more subscribers. But here's the thing, subscribing to a channel to make them sub back to you is A, against YouTube's rules and can actually have your channel taken down, and B, will not make your channel grow. Why? Because you'll end up with loads and loads of subscribers that don't actually watch nor care about your videos. Because people do sub exchanges to make their numbers go up. And when people do sub exchanges, they will do it with literally any channel who is willing to, no matter what content they make. So you could wind up with having like 300 subscribers that have no care in the world for your videos. And then you end up asking yourself, why am I not getting views? And your answer is because you did sub swaps instead of getting active subscribers who actually enjoy enjoy your content. So I know, I know it is very difficult to get your channel up off the ground. It's very hard to gain subscribers when you are a small channel, but if you do put in the time and the work and you actually get organic growth, in the long run, you will thank yourself. Mistake number seven, spamming comments. Loads and loads and loads of small YouTubers go on all sorts of bigger YouTubers channels and leave comments like, by the way, I'm a small YouTuber, check out my YouTube channel, blah, 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 blah. And they copy paste this same comment on hundreds upon hundreds of videos. Now here's the thing. If you spam comments and the same comment over and over again on 200 channels, YouTube can actually pick up your channel as a bot and delete your channel. So all this effort you're putting in to get your channel noticed can actually be the one thing that gets you shut down on YouTube and then you're back to square one. So don't be that person. Don't put your channel at risk. Don't take advantage of people. Don't use people and just put in the time and effort to grow your channel organically. Mistake number eight, not optimizing your videos. Now I'm not going to make this point 20 minutes long. I have enough videos on my channel about SEO, optimization, ranking and search, getting on the recommended page. But if you are not putting in the time to do keyword research and filling up your tag box, your description, the putting in good keywords in your titles, your videos chances are are not going to be getting out there ranked in search or on the recommended page or being put in front of the right people. So you definitely, definitely want to learn everything you can about keyword research, optimizing videos, ranking in search, getting on the recommended page, because that is probably the number one thing that will definitely blow up your channel. Mistake number nine, not listening to your audience. Over the course of having my channel, I've gotten loads of comments about like nervous tics that I have or things that people love about my editing, things they don't love about my editing things they want more of, things they want less of, video ideas they want to see. Take the time to read these comments, engage with them, answer them. You're not uploading videos for yourself, you're uploading them for your audience. So listen to them and hear what they want. They will literally tell you all you need to know. Mistake number 10, not having an upload schedule. Here's the thing, at the beginning of your channel, YouTube is doing literally nothing to get your channel and videos up off the ground. So it's literally all up to you. What makes YouTube push your videos out is engagement. But with having a smaller audience, your engagement is kind of limited because not that many people are finding your videos nor engaging with them. And the other thing that is actually against you is that YouTube does not give your video to everybody. It prioritizes the people who have notifications on for your videos and besides that, only about 10 to 20% of your subs actually get your video in their sub box. Now you're saving 
saving grace for this is an upload schedule. If your subscribers know the exact days and times you're uploading, they know exactly when to look out for a new video. So even if YouTube doesn't notify them, doesn't give them your video, they know when to look for a new one. For the longest time, I would just film a video, edit it, and upload it whenever I wanted to, and then I realized how important upload schedules actually are. So that is one more thing you want to do for your channel to help it grow. Mistake number 11, not engaging on other channels. When you're a new YouTuber, you're the new guy in town. Everybody has lived in that same neighborhood for different lengths of time, but overall people have started to get to know each other. They know who lives there, they know who's out there. When you're new in town, nobody knows that you exist. Nobody knows that you've moved in. So by going over to other people's channels and engaging with them, commenting on their videos, talking to them, you're making yourself more known in the neighborhood, AKA the YouTube community. So find other small YouTubers within your same community that make similar channels and engage with them. This is how I've made some of my closest friends on YouTube and also how I've found loads of collabs on YouTube, which is just one more way to grow your channel. So as a small YouTuber, you definitely, definitely want to put in the time to engage within the community. Mistake number 12 is one I made for the longest time, neglecting audio and lighting. So here's a straight up tea. You do not need a $2,000 DSLR camera or any type of professional equipment to be successful on YouTube. What you do need to have is good lighting and good audio. Because if when watching your video, the audio and the visuals are not pleasing to the eye and the ears, people don't really want to watch your video and they're less likely to actually subscribe to you. As an example, here's a video you're watching right now. Here's what it looks like with no lighting, and here's what it looks like with lighting. This is the same camera of the same price of the same quality with and without lighting. So you can film on your iPhone, on your Android, on your iPad, but what it comes down to for good quality is lighting and audio. Those are two things you wanna prioritize over anything else. Mistake 13, not enough uniqueness. I'm gonna be 100% honest with you. If I go onto a channel and their last like five videos are a morning routine, what I eat in a day, what's on my iPhone, outfit of the days, whatever. Those videos have been done so many freaking times and there's nothing unique about the channel. Now, that does not mean you can't or shouldn't upload any popular videos, actually the opposite. Uploading popular videos does get you more views and more traffic, but making popular videos should not be your number one priority because the more popular an idea is for a video, the less unique the idea is. It's when you're not like everybody else that you actually start to stand out and attract more people to your channel. So yes, make popular videos if you want to, but do not make your number one goal making every single popular video that exists because then you're just not unique anymore. Mistake number 14, another one of my bigger ones relying on one platform. Yes, YouTube is the main platform because that is where your video is, that is where the views are coming in, that's where the subscribers are coming in, but you're doing your channel a grave disservice by not sharing it on Instagram or Twitter or Reddit or joining YouTube or Facebook groups. External growth and external traffic is such a powerful tool that not enough people understand and or use. The second I started using my Instagram to grow my channel and creating more Facebook groups and joining Facebook groups, that is when I started getting so much much more external traffic and growing my channel so much more. So if you have any type of social network or social media you can be using to gain more subscribers, do it. It is so powerful. Mistake number 15, thinking you deserve success. No matter how amazing your videos are, no matter how long or how hard you're working on your channel, nobody deserves anything on YouTube. It is something you have to stay patient for and wait and wait and wait until it finally comes to you. Telling yourself that you deserve subscribers or deserve more views or deserve anything is only going to make you more frustrated when you don't get that thing. So instead of telling the universe or somebody not actually listening to you like, I deserve so much more, I deserve so much better, instead look at your analytics, figure out what's working, figure out what's not working, change what's not working, and change and change and change until you actually see success and actually see growth. You're going to get nothing by telling yourself you deserve growth because nobody deserves anything. Mistake number 16, my top, my biggest, my biggest, biggest fault, not studying the algorithm. Understanding and cracking the YouTube algorithm should be one of, if not your number one priority when trying to grow your channel. Whether you do this by researching articles or watching videos like mine or anything that teaches you about the algorithm, you need to do as much research as possible to fully understand how the algorithm works. 
for the first year of my channel. I didn't even know YouTube had an algorithm. I didn't know how it worked. I didn't know how YouTube picked videos. I didn't know what CTR or audience retention is. I did not know about ranking in search or getting your videos on the recommended page. Had I known any of what I know now, I could have grown so much faster. So do everything in your power to study, understand, and crack the algorithm, and you will grow so much faster. Mistake 17, making your intros too long. One of my favorite channels on the face of YouTube are the Arnold sisters. I've loved them for the longest time. When they first started their channel, their intro was maybe like four or five seconds. Now they've changed their intro and it's literally like 35 seconds long. Same thing with some of these like family channels. They have intros where they basically introduce each member of the family and the intros are like a minute long. After like two, three videos, I know your intro, I know your family, just get to the video. Having longer intros and prolonging how long it takes to get into your video is not gonna gain you more views or subscribers. It's going to repel people away. So I don't mean don't have an intro. I have an intro, so I'm not gonna tell you not to have one, but keep it short, keep it quick, and keep keep it to the point. If you want views and subscribers, get to your point as fast as possible. Leaving your description empty. Here's a fun little factoid for you. Besides your title, your description is the number one thing YouTube's algorithm looks at to figure out what your video is about and who to recommend your video to. If your description is empty or says something like, enjoy the video, or don't forget to sub, or don't forget to like, that tells the algorithm nothing about what your video is about and who to recommend it to, which is when YouTube's algorithm gives your videos to the wrong people and the wrong audience and people who don't care about your video. Whereas if your descriptions are full of keywords and things that say, this is what the video is about, this is what this video is going to be, YouTube's algorithm will recommend your video to people who typically watch those videos and people who are more likely to actually want to watch your video. So don't get lazy, write a description, tell people what your video is about, and you will thank yourself in the long run. Evaluate your own work. When I first started on YouTube, I would literally upload a video, reply to comments, and then move on to the next video. But I have now learned along the way how important it is to consistently be reading your analytics because your analytics will tell you things about your audience retention, how many people are watching your videos and for how long, where are people clicking off of your video, which thumbnails are working, which ones aren't, which videos are getting you views and which ones aren't. There is always, always, always going to be room for improvement on YouTube and you're doing yourself a huge, huge disservice by not figuring out what those things are. So after you upload every one of your videos, be sure to go back to the analytics and figure out what worked on that video and what didn't work and change what didn't work. And then the final really big mistake a lot of YouTubers make is having the wrong focus and the wrong reasons. You will hear a lot of YouTubers say, don't start for the money, that doesn't come for the longest time, and honestly, it's not that great a paycheck. Honestly, I disagree. I think there is nothing wrong with a stay-at-home mom looking for a side hustle or a college grad looking for a way to pay off their tuition. But I mean more so for smaller YouTubers who claim to start for the fun of it and then literally only care about subscribers and views and numbers. Believe me when I tell you, if your only focus on YouTube is how far you can grow, your subscribers and viewers are going to see right through you. And that is when you will lose support rather than gain it. So be sure when you are starting a YouTube channel to ask yourself, why am I starting? What's the end goal? Where do I want to end up? If your main goal is being a mother who needs a side hustle to make more money for her family, that's fine, nothing wrong with it. But be honest with yourself from the beginning and your audience what your main goals are so they can support you knowing your goals. The best way to stay genuine and honest and real with your audience is to be real and genuine with yourself. So that you guys is it for 20 of the biggest mistakes small YouTubers make that are keeping you from growing your channel. So hopefully if you've been struggling to grow or you feel like you've hit sort of like a little plateau, then hopefully any one of these tips can help you or make you realize something you're doing that you shouldn't be or something you should be doing and hopefully it helped you. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Love you all to the moon and back and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.